Hello and welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to be going over scopes in Square. Now my usual format of going through this PowerPoint is usually what I will begin with, but you can read this from the GitHub and the map that this is associated with from GitHub. So go to the link and see it from there. So let's begin. We have an external global variable. This is with a prefix of two columns. We have two external global variables called ct and t, which is a string that has ct and t. So this can be accessed anywhere from any script, as long as you have the two columns. This here is an internal global variable, that's what I like to call it, as this variable here is accessible from the whole script, but no other scripts can access it unless you link it up. And it's an integer as it holds the number 3. We also have to use the new slot operator due to how global variables are stored in Squirrel. It's in a table. Here we see an internal local variable, which means that this is only accessible to the function. After this function gets called, this is disposed of and you cannot use it. But what we can do is we can increment the person kills because this is accessible within the script. The weird thing about Squirrel, if you go to the PowerPoint which is available in GitHub, is that the external global variable cannot read or write to the script global functions, but the script functions can easily write and read from the global. So local scripts can assign or read from the global, but the global cannot do it back because the script has it all contained within itself. The easiest way to explain this is that if you want to communicate with all the scripts or use one usage, you want to store it inside the global scope table. And anything that is logic behind an other script should be kept within the scripts. And here's an example of a root table. We have all the functions here. And we have the extra two slots, which is two global variables, which is a float and a string. Also take note that all the functions from Squirrel is taken over from the script itself. And here's an overview of what I declare things as. So the highest scope is the external global scope with the two prefixes here. This is accessible throughout the whole script. Even if you don't link the script up, you can use this variable or add variables to the global scope. We have the internal global scope, which is used from the script, which is accessible throughout. We also have the internal local scope, which is only accessible from functions. You cannot use a local variable within the script, so it has to be under a function. The map makes usage of a fake event handler, which the user can assign custom things based on feedback from the script. So we have the print class and the child class, which is based on inheritance from OOP. So here we have the two main events, which is stored under base, which is on entity found and on name change. And then the child class, which is under player.not, is carried, but we have an initial event called on health call. This is a function that's not available from the parent class, but for the player class itself. So we do not need to implement these two functions as these are automatically carried over when you inherit the base class. As we see here, we have the external global table here called events, which can be accessed to whatever script requires it. We have two events that's already initialized as null called on entity found and on name changed. If you look at the player, which is also available in GitHub, we check that if on health call is not a part of the fence, we assign it to the fence table. So we have to remember that these two are carried over when you extend the base class, which in this instance is called the wrapper. So to make the event handler, we have to use the echo function, which takes the first parameter of this and whatever is going to be passed in. We also have a function called is function assigned, which is a safeguard to check that the whatever is assigned 
is a function. So we use the tape of operator and we have to make sure that it's a function and then we turn it true. So that means we can execute it and if it's not, then we set it to false which is not a function that's been assigned to the table. So we can implement this in here. So let's get started. Let's make our fake handler table. Let's make it an internal global variable because we don't need it to be used throughout the script. So let's call it just offense, low caps. Then use table assign. Now let's assign a key slot. So let's assign a key slot, which is a key and a value. So let's make the event of the prefix on. Let's say fire for now. So we were saying this to null. So we need to invoke this. So what we need to do is we need to attach our function onto here. But let's make a function. So now we have a function called on kill. Now we're going to carry over the offense table. We're going to call the on fire. And then we need this echo. So that's our blueprint for now. So when this gets called, this event gets fired. Let's make it more dynamic. So when this happens, we should pass something through here. Let's make this data type just called data for now. So we need to pass in this data here. So now what we need to do is make a table. Make it. Let's make it local because you don't want anyone to access this information out with this function. So I'm going to call this target. Let's just make a dummy table. Let's just call it whatever. So the name, let's say first name is me. Damage taken, let's say that we took three. Now I'm going to pass this in. Remember it requires an array. So the first entity is this, then followed by whatever's after. So now when we call this function, we call this function here and then we pass in our, our table with the name and the damage taken. So now we are in this event, we need to take consideration of data. So we have data.name and we do have data.damage underscore taken. So that's what data will hold once it's passed through. Let's make a function that prints it. So let's name the target and then data name and then amount plus data underscore damage taken and let's add HP at the end. You also have to be careful. Let's do the new line operator. This is we're working with raw square. So if you're doing this using Counter Strike, so you using print L and then without this. But because I'm using raw square with this, I do need to use the normal function here and I do need to use the new line operator afterwards. So let's take this over to pio.run, hashtag square. But the problem now is if you run this, nothing will happen and we get an error. Line seven. It's because we don't need that. Okay, that makes sense. So the issue here was you cannot use the new slot operator with the local. The, with locals, it has to be the assignment operator. You cannot use the new slot operator. That was my mistake. We know this works as there is no more errors here. Now let's info on kill. Notice as our caution function here is printed out the target and the amount. This will allow the user to use your script and make it functional based on how they want it to happen. And that's what exactly happens in player. In here, I have a custom function. The result would be from the data response. And then I can code it to the way that I would like the code to function. This way, I am not restricted on what I can do. This is a double win because the person doesn't need to tell you that the code does not work and it will work on their favour since they call the function and how they want it to work. So that's how you can create a fake event handler in Squirrel and a good explanation to my terminologies of the scope system in Squirrel.
This may be my last video on Squirrel due to Source 2 coming up. So hopefully I will learn a little bit of Lula. And if not, then we can still continue Squirrel. I don't know when the next video will be, but I'll let you guys know in the future.